Well, here we are, our next Let's Talk episode, and uh, we're joined by the incredible Pastor Ross and Kathy Abraham, uh, just two just inspiring leaders, two great <clears throat> friends of this church, and uh, Pastor Ross and Kathy lead our international network of churches, the family that we are a part of, uh, and today we are going to be talking Let's Talk Marriage, and Vicky and I, we have the absolute privilege of spending time with uh, Pastor Ross and Kathy in Australia, and uh, I've got to say, uh, the way, you know, we, we, we're going to talk about marriage, but we've had the privilege of seeing up close uh, your marriage. It's been so inspiring, uh, the way you've navigated raising children, got your family, how you prioritize the things that matter. Uh, and so often in church circles, we, we don't see that. Mm. And mm. so we've been so inspired by that and Thank really you. excited to just get into some of these questions uh, today. And so are you ready for us to fire away? We're just going to we go into ready. questions. We are ready. And thank Let, you for having us. Well, it's, it's an absolute privilege of us. Can I ask you for maybe just to share a little bit uh, about you both, how long you've been married and yeah, any of, any of your journey in that way. How long have we been married, right? 37 years. Oh, there we Two go. Two weeks ago. <laughs> Come on. No <laughs> way. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Yes. Amazing. It's on our um, 37th anniversary and... Yeah, we've got two beautiful children, both um, in adult years now. So yeah. our daughter is 32, Tara. Wow. She's married to Lachlan and they um, do our Tweed campus mm. back on the Gold Coast. So it's in northern New South Wales. Yeah. Um, and then we've got a son, Jade, and he's 30. Yeah. Three grandkids. Three yeah. grandkids. Amazing. Three grandkids. Yeah. Yes. And so, um, Four horses and five chickens. Oh, the whole lot. <laughs> Actually, it should have gone. Married 37 years. We have four horses, five chickens. And then the kids, that's the grandkids. It, that's it. It. It the that. horses, they're pretty, they're, they're a big priority. They're very guys. high up. High yeah, up. yeah. that's where our our um, our will has been signed over to. So all of our wealth <laughs> goes to our horses. Imagine. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. And the chickens. That's awesome. Uh -huh. tell, tell us just a bit about um, your journey of faith. Uh, have you grown up in Christian homes? Have you Did you find God at a young age? What's that journey been like? I grew up in a Christian home, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, gave my life to Jesus at an early age. Yeah. Uh, Mum and dad were uniting church pastors. Wow. Um, only just recently have retired. Wow. Um, Ross? Yeah, I not... grew up in a non-Christian home and came to faith when I was 19 wow. at Kathy's father's church yeah. only because she was the song leader and <laughs> she was she still is smoking hot. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. like at 18, like she was like, <laughs> and so um, Good I went to talk on marriage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went to check her out because she was song leading in a nice big white dress, and I still remember leading that song, Majesty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and gave my heart to Christ soon after. Wow, yeah. that's enough said. <laughs> that is amazing. That's amazing. And so, um, but before we dive into the questions, actually, tell me um, why is it important that as the church, you know, society, marriages are so broken. As we look at society, we look at our world. Why does it matter that we, we pursue healthy marriages in the church? We know it's God's design, but um, yeah, any, any thoughts on just why it's worth the hard yards to mm. be honest, to build environments where marriages can thrive? Mm. It's funny, isn't it? Because I think um, marriages today are not the normal. Mm -hmm. it's more normal to be everything else but married. Mm -hmm. In fact, you're, it's abnormal. I know even with my grandkids at school, majority of the parents are either split wow. or they're in single homes or, or, or all kinds of scenarios. Very few, the minority, is just a happily married wow. family. Um, so I think for that reason alone, mm -hmm. the importance of um, being an example especially to your kids, yeah, yeah. it just raises a healthy, godly, biblical yeah. environment that people thrive under, yes. um, yeah. including yeah. yourself, when yeah. you choose yeah. to make, you know, you choose, you choose yeah. every day. Yeah, yeah. you don't just stay in love. It's a yeah. choice every yeah. day to continue to walk on that journey in a covenant relationship. Yeah, yeah. 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 covenant Absolutely. means nothing these yeah. days. Yeah. It really doesn't. Mm. So that's... Yeah. yeah, and it reflects Christ's relationship with the church. Yeah, and when they see broken marriages, and there's no condemnation here for those yeah. that have been through yeah. a broken marriage, yeah. but it also then reflects uh, a 
image of the church of a fractured church yeah. um, when marriage was always to, to design to, to show yeah. God's love for his people yeah. and so the way a husband loves his wife. So yeah, it's important to fight for. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna jump in. Uh, we're gonna start with fun. Just looking around that that topic. Uh, what do you guys do to keep things fun? Mm. Mm. I don't think that's for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do lots of things actually. Yeah, um, yeah. Probably one of the reasons I I actually chose Ross was because he made me laugh so much. Yeah. Oh, you chose um, me. <laughs> I'm the alpha male here. Yeah. I chose you. <laughs> okay, you chose me. But that—that that yeah. is a huge part of, yeah. um, I think, our relationship. Just loving to laugh. Yeah. And you know, we've had some terrible dark times, um, especially even in our ministry life. Mm -hmm. But being able to laugh together, through, make yeah. fun of it, yeah. uh, make fun of circumstances rather yeah. than taking it really seriously, I think yeah. is what gets you through. That's great. What we do to have fun, um, we do have a property. Yeah. So we both love our horses. Um, yeah. Horse riding, spending time with the grandkids yeah. um, is often something that I love to do and find yeah. fun. The beach. Yeah. Um, All of that. Yeah. Learning to laugh. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and you have to learn to laugh. Yeah. There's a lot not to laugh at yeah and if you focus on that you'll be you'll spend your whole marriage looking at what you don't like yeah. about your partner yeah but you've got to find what you fell in love with and what yeah. you still like and learn to build around that yeah. and to laugh together do you think it takes work to do that uh, yes you know, I, think hard it, I think of people who oh, might I'm be years <laughs> Oh, it's hard work yeah. for me. No, um, no, no, I think of people who might be years and years into their marriage and they've just lost yeah. that ability to laugh. Like, how would you encourage people in that place? Yeah, probably. You're obviously in a rut, and yeah. the only way to get out of a rut is to change up the routine. Yeah. And so, whatever you're currently doing isn't working. Yeah. And you've got to love your marriage enough yeah. to pivot and make the changes. And some of those changes will be uncomfortable. Yeah. It'll mean, you know, dressing up and going out for dinner rather than putting on your, your shorts and going to the local pub for dinner. Yeah, you know, yeah. it'll, it'll mean doing what your partner, your spouse wants yeah. to do, not just what you want to do. Yeah, uh, like Kathy said about the horses, we both learned to ride a horse. Yeah. And so we've both done that because we want to have fun together. Yeah. Right. got me out of my comfort zone mm. and so it's just being willing to to mix things up that's for amazing. the sake of longevity yeah. in your marriage yeah Love you got to fight for it yeah it's mm -hmm. amazing okay next question uh what highlights from your own marriage can you share with couples that are newlyweds mm. oh. what are your highlights we've got so oh, many we've oh, got 37 yeah. years yeah. of yeah um I think to one of the, it's almost a repeat of yeah. one of the the best things that you can keep when you fall in love and you first get married, yeah. everything's fun. Yeah. Everything. You yeah. know, it's the first time, you know, setting up a house together, yeah. uh, sleeping in the same bed together, not having to go to separate places. Mm. Um, all yeah. of it's just, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, 10 years on, what was so amazing mm. becomes very routine. Yeah. And I think keeping the little things, the highlights. Yes. We know of so many couples that have spent hundreds and thousands of dollars on, they get in a rut or things get boring, so they have to do a trip. Wow. Or they've got to go on another holiday. Wow. Or they, but the thing is, I think one thing that we have found, it's often the simple, simplistic things, yeah, yeah. the simple things, yeah. um, random things sometimes yeah, yeah. Um, that can just keep a marriage fresh. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, definitely, I mean, I could share so many highlights. Yeah. Going to Paris was one yeah, of them, yeah. you know, um, yeah. and some of the trips we've done are definitely highlights. Yeah. But as yeah. much as that high-end stuff is so much fun, there's also times when, you know, I remember colouring in with Ross, mm. laughing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Two adults 100%. sitting on a table with crayons, yeah. you know, col yeah. colouring in or, yeah. you know, drawing a funny picture. But it just sparks something creative and yeah. fun in you yeah. um, that you just enjoy as a couple together. Yeah. And probably other highlights for me is intimate conversations. Mm. Um, there is nothing better than when you've got something that you really want to talk about 
yeah. and are struggling to articulate that. Yeah. But to have a moment and you either go out for dinner or, you know, yeah. go for a walk or whatever and you have a deep conversation, yeah. that's, that's yeah. that to me is, is yeah. huge. I, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, 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 no. Keep going, Cathy. Sorry. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah. No, no. I, I just, I was going to say, I absolutely love that because you're so right that those daily things or weekly things that are affordable <laughs> Um, a, a deep conversation. I mm. think with Vicky, you know, I, I love, we'd love just going out for a coffee. Mm. Yes. And you're just in the midst of the buzz of town, you're in the midst of the buzz of life, but just hang that moment to just go, we are being intentional together. Yes. And um, Vicky loves puzzles. And so I got into puzzles. I can't yeah. stand the puzzle. <laughs> but, but, but what it did, and we're, you know, we're nine years in, so um into our marriage but what it does just having that intentional moment away from the phone wow. away from distractions you're so right do you argue doing the puzzle uh we've learned that we've got different roles <laughs> <laughs> she's the detailed one and um, uh, it, it flows i suppose from that question and you, you've answered it a bit just someone said how do we keep our marriage fresh and not fall into familiarity mm. and would you say similar answers, similar? Yeah, I think I, um, I put a quote down here. It says, we need to pull weeds and then plant seeds. That's great. And, and keeping it fresh means you, you've got to be diligent, like you would in a garden, mm. to uproot the unhealthiness that's in yeah. relationships, but then replant some of the healthy things yeah. to keep it fresh. Yeah. Um, staying curious yeah. about one another. Yeah. Asking questions. That's great. You know, don't allow the, the, the fullness of life and the, the exhaustion in life mm. to stop us being curious. And mm. uh, every afternoon I'm home, I'll mm. sit on the kitchen bench or beside Kathy if she's yeah. prepping dinner and we'll talk. We'll yeah. just, how was your day? And as she's, you know, doing stuff in the kitchen, she'll say, you know, about her day, yeah. we'll, we'll yeah. converse in that that's way. Great. But it's just staying curious. Yeah. And, and if you don't do that, that familiarity, that cloud of fami familiarity just blows into a relationship. Yeah. We go on autopilot, yeah. do our own thing. And before you know it, yeah. you're, you're miles apart. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. I think sometimes too, it's not how you walk into a marriage thinking, how compatible am, am I with the other person? It's more how do I deal with what's not compatible yeah. with our yeah. in compatibilities yeah. how do yeah. you deal with that that's what makes a good marriage yeah, um not where we all gel but there's going to be moments and times where there's no gelling yeah, yeah. it's what you do in those times yeah absolutely i think that makes a great marriage great mm. that's amazing okay uh next question we're going to just keep going yeah. mm. going through them i hope that's okay um you're telling us to hurry up no 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 no, no. <laughs> I would say that if we need to. <laughs> uh, no, this is gold. I just don't want to miss out. Um, how can I best support my husband or wife? Um, how can I be the, the best husband or wife to my spouse? So uh, I suppose just some thoughts on in daily life, what it looks like to support yeah. your husband or wife. I think a big thing is, um, is everyday routine of... Um, saying to each other or uh, like I can only speak from my perspective but saying I love you yeah. every day um yeah. not just I see I love you yeah. where it's a flippant remark but mm. I love you I really yeah. love you yeah. um words like I appreciate what you've done wow. I appreciate the work you've put in so I love yeah. you I appreciate you and I think the third thing is I want you to always know that I'd fight for you wow. um I will always be in your corner Wow. Um, and I think, um, yeah, you want to always be endorsing each other. Yes. And there are times and moments where you probably don't feel those feelings. Mm. But again, it's a choice. It's Love is not a feeling. Mm. It's a commitment and it's a covenant. Yeah. yeah. So I choose to trust God with that yes. and continue to fight for Ross, yeah. appreciate what I can appreciate yeah. and all the things that he does that I am so grateful for every day and I can truly say yeah. that. Um, and yeah, continue to say how much you love each other yeah. with meaning, genuine yeah. meaning. Yeah. I just think doing things like that every day just breaks yeah. the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. I would just add to that, learn to be present. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Create a safe yeah, environment at so home yeah. and be present. Um, mm. Yeah, safety is not the absence of threat, it's, mm. the, it's the presence of, of connection. 
So wow. that, that's huge for, for couples. Yeah. There's a great actual quote by Martin Luther that says, let the wife make the husband glad to come home and let him make her sorry to see him leave. Wow. And I just wow, think if we live great. our lives like that, yeah, 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 I can't wait for you to get home. Yeah. And I'm so sad when you leave because wow. of the way you make me feel when you are home. Wow, that's yeah. that's amazing. Gosh, there's so much in there. I wish we had longer. We will at some point. But uh, we're going to jump into the next one. Um, external advice or counsel. Um, how Yeah, it is. Um, you know, what do you endorse? What well, is external advice helpful in a marriage? Yeah, and where would you recommend? Yeah. encourage people to go. I, I, I would just say that that I am always open for advice from anyone that I respect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the person doesn't have to have walked in my shoes, mm -hmm. but if they've got a lifestyle and a a um, value system that I respect, mm -hmm. then I'll always be open. I think where we come undone is when we start listening to everyone regardless. Like I know people that are go through a marriage struggle and they're getting advice from people who have recently divorced yeah. or, and, and it's just the wrong place yeah. to look in. So look mm -hmm. for people yeah. that are going to not just tell you what you want to hear, they'll ask you the second and third question. Yeah. Um, and they're people that also have a reputation and a value base that you subscribe to. Yeah, that's great. That's mm. great. And that could be parents, friends, yeah. church, yeah. Wh whatever. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. And, and make sure you're wanting people to give you advice, not just agreement on what yeah. you're already thinking. <laughs> yeah. Just the, we've all been there. We've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love that. So follow example, see yeah. example, yeah. the fruit in their yeah. lives. Yeah. When, when yeah. we struggled raising kids early on, we yeah. went to one of the pastors we know who has at that time, I think it was five yeah. or four, four children four. Yeah. and, and they weren't perfect, but yeah. they were raising the kids in a godly way. And we said, yeah. we want to talk to you. It's mm. great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Um, how can someone encourage their spouse to be in community? Um, yeah, you, that that difficult time where mm. it often can be the case, whether it's community, w whatever it might be, where maybe God is doing something in your heart, not in your spouse's. Mm. I know, mm, but, tricky. You know, God's done stuff in Vicky's heart, and and it's taken me a while to catch, catch up. What mm. yes. would your encouragement be to someone if they're thriving in community but they don't see the same for their spouse? Mm. How do they encourage and support them into into yeah. that place? Yeah. Mm. Don't nag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you, yeah. Did you want yeah. to add to that? I, I just think don't, you can't have an expectation of what you're going through mm. for your husband or for your wife. Mm. Um, we've had lots of situations yeah. like that um, where Ross is gung ho at mm. something and I just, it's just not in me. Mm. Um, so I think there's so many levels to this question because I think sometimes it's a releasing thing. Yeah. It's just like, okay, you don't, you go do that. Mm. I'm happy to do what I'm doing. Yeah. If it, if it's coming down to the call of God, yeah. I think that's different. I know we've had another scenario when my kids were little mm. and I was staying home on a Sunday night mm. and Ross made that call gently, but firmly mm. that I think it's time for you to bring the kids to the night service. Yeah. Um, and I didn't like it, yeah. but I'm so grateful because yeah. I realized I'd become in a real rut yeah. um, mm. and uh, it wasn't healthy. Yeah. Um, so I think there's so many different scenarios. Yeah. It's hard to yeah. answer that, but I think, you know, depending on what the community is and what that looks like, if there's mutual agreement for one to go do what they want to do and the other not to, then I think yeah. that's great. Yeah. Um, I think it's only unhealthy when someone's doing something and the other the other party is feeling either left out mm. or resentful, resentful yeah. or yeah. wow you're always out yeah. you know with the boys mm. for example or maybe you're always yeah. at the gym yeah and I have concerns with that then yes. I think that's something that's then got to be talked about yeah. and yeah. being reasonable and then it comes back to you know if there's a problem that someone can feel mm. starting to arise and that's when wise counsel comes yeah. in Great. um I don't know how that answers your question. Yeah. I just no, think it's good. quite broad. It's yeah. 
yeah. what that commitment looks yes. like to community. Yes, absolutely. But, but, but don't nag the person. Yeah. Pray for the person. Yeah. yeah. And really be an example of yeah. how healthy co- our community is yeah. to them. When they when they see you, yeah, 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 that your yeah. life is alive and energised, yeah. then we lead them into community. Yeah. Mm. And we're not forcing them into mm. community. Not pushing them. Mm. Yeah, that's great. No, I love that. Um, how can I encourage my spouse to further their relationship with God? I think that's a big one. Oh, it's huge. We all have seasons where yeah. one of us might be in a healthier place with God. Yeah. How have you guys journeyed that? I would have to rave about Ross with that mm-hmm. because early in our marriage, I felt very insignificant in comparison to his walk with God. Mm-hmm. I felt like mine never really measured up. Mm-hmm. Um To be honest, it was just like, oh, he prays, you know, early in the morning and he's so good at this and he's so good at that. And, you know, for there was a season where I was trying to copy what he did or and then I just started to as maturity come and Mm. comes and as you grow, you realise that actually no, my walk with God's really significant and special as well. Yeah. Um, and then that kind of combined and we really started to complement each other. Um and so I think the biggest thing and I know it's cliche, but yeah. honestly, it does come back to prayer for each yeah. other. Yeah. I think if I know Ross is praying for me and yeah. my prayer life is just for him and for our family and yeah. to bring that, it, it's just amazing. I could tell you so many stories of yeah. times when I've shut my mouth, but prayers have been answered. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And it's it's worked in our marriage. Wow. And there'd be things that he wouldn't even know I've prayed for. Wow. And I've seen an open door where I've gone, I didn't have to say anything, you know, and it blows my mind just that kind of, when you see God turn up in your, in your own prayer life for your marriage, you know, he, he's actually so capable of bringing about change. We are a testimony to that. Mm. Um, but I'd like to add to that too. I've got a little. We are called to inspire our families into relationship yeah. with Christ, to follow yeah. Him. Yeah. And knowing that that chances are 93% of our kids and our spouse will follow us. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. significant. Yeah. So I would add to what Kathy said. Yeah. Don't nag, pray, and don't judge them according to the way you meet with God. Wow. That That's mm. the way they got to meet with it's God. Mm. You it's may pray great. for an hour. They may pray for five minutes in the bathroom. Mm. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. 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 God's God. Yeah. yeah. Personality is different. God yeah. meets them different ways. That's that's so good, guys. Um, how can I encourage my spouse to step into the call of God uh, that he's placed in their life? It's probably similar. Probably ways. similar. I, I would just add a couple of things there. Reinforce what you see in them yeah. and your spouse. Uh, tell them what wow. they're good at. Say, man, you, you know, you were so good with people. Kathy, yes, was it yesterday? I said when Jamie dropped us off at where we're staying, I said, Thanks, babe, so much. You were so good at engaging people and talking to people and making yeah. people feel special. And, yeah. and and again, for me, that's not um, patronizing. That's mm-hmm. actually complimenting yeah. the gold that's in her. Yeah. So I think we're so good at telling our spouses what what they're not what we're not good at. Yeah, yeah. But we don't say enough of you're <laughs> really good at that. Yes. And all that does is encourage one another yeah. to fulfill what God's got on our life. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I would say. lot um and uh, you know honestly some some areas are different from other areas but i think as a whole and general generally when we go through challenging times i think it's so important to be accountable um and accountable to someone outside that situation um i've written a few things down here about that one actually um commit to always stay honest and open I think that's a big one. Yeah. Um, honesty and openness in a marriage, as hard as that is yeah. in a challenging time, mm. um, if you can find that, that time and place to be honest and open, it makes the biggest difference. Mm. Um, 
keep checking in. Yeah. So it's not one honest conversation. Yeah. It's let's check in again. Yeah. Let's work yeah. through this. Let's keep yeah. talking. Um, one thing I said to my daughter when she got married, she said, Mum, what's the biggest advice you, would you would you ever give to me yeah. that you wished you'd had known? And I said, talk. Wow. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Above all else, if you talk, if you keep that door open mm. to communication, and it's actually been the biggest gift in their marriage, yeah. Yeah. is they can talk about anything. Yeah. Um, I think that's a, that's a so um, powerful thing. In a challenging time, as hard as this is, I think it's important to keep the sexual relationship strong mm. um, because that's also a spiritual yeah. relationship yeah. and it keeps unity there. It keeps yes. the enemy away. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, that's important. Um, and depending on what you're going through, challenges, you fight with Jesus. Yeah. Um, right. And again, I know that sounds cliche, but no, you can't good. fight alone. Yeah. You know, you walk into a marriage, that marriage is a covenant relationship unto God. Yeah. And so the only way you're going to get rid of rubble and rubbish yeah. in your life yeah. is to come back to that covenant. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. Gosh, that was mm. that's amazing. Yeah. That's I love this quote from Will Ferrell, comedian. He said this, yeah. before you marry a person, you should first make them use a computer with slow internet to see who they really are. <laughs> That's awesome. Isn't that great? That's so what good. But uh, uh, just, if I can just add to what Kathy said, yeah. bef before you hold a grudge, hold yeah. a conversation. Wow. You yeah. got to talk. Yeah, yeah. We 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 struggle, yeah. especially in faith-based yeah. marriages. We struggle having yeah. healthy That's conversation. Right. Uh, all this unresolved trauma, yeah. it causes us to perceive, express, and relate differently. Yeah. And yeah. so we're coming out of that trauma to one another. So yeah. we tend to attack, we tend to isolate, withdraw, yeah. go cold. We've got all these yeah. tactics. Yeah. And if we don't talk about it, we think that's what we're, who we really are. Yeah. And yeah. it's not. And the yeah. only way to resolve it is obviously to yeah. firstly start talking. Yeah. It's great. I, for Vicky and I, um, I brought so much baggage into our relationship. Yeah. And that we had to learn pretty early on. We had honesty out. Wow. And so it was just, it oh, was just so good. once a week, honesty hour, we spend an hour and it's complete judgment free. You can say whatever you want, but the goal was just complete honesty. And uh, you know, I look at our, our relationship and it, it went from honesty hour to just being a culture. But it's amazing how in intense seasons of life, how quickly yes. you, you, that honesty can slip yeah. and just, you're so right, just fighting for uh -huh. intentional honest moments date night or whatever that looks like um yeah the power of honesty yeah yeah it's, um, absolutely yeah. and it's so yeah, hard changer. though it's so, so, hard. so easy to sit and talk but yeah. when you're in a challenging time yeah or with it when you're struggling yourself yeah with yeah. you know maybe a sin or yeah. you know impurity or whatever yeah. that it's the hardest thing yes. to own that and bring it into yeah. the light because the enemy doesn't want it in the light because yeah. he wants to destroy a marriage. And and that's it, the, the, the power of going, I am married to this person. And so when they're honest about something, I'm rejoicing because that means we're walking to freedom together. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's mm. coming away from this, I have to hide and, and uh -huh. have this front, which because mm. uh, it just damages yeah. more, doesn't it? And, okay. and that unresolved trauma then yeah. helps us feel attacked Yes. Mm. Yeah. Rejected. Yeah. Mm. And we start acting out of that. Yeah. And it's mm. almost impossible to yeah. find this this meeting place. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. so when we can get honest and vulnerable, yeah, it's yeah. the start of some healing. Yeah. Yeah. Dave Hoff is his his line he, he he shared throughout the years, which has been just so evident in our church, is honest radical honesty leads to radical change. Yeah. The moment wow. we're honest is when God begins to Absolutely. Yeah. When yeah. Honest with God. How can you move on that situation? Well, shame and guilt and embarrassment lives yeah. in the shadows. That's Absolutely. where it thrives. So when we hide yeah. it, it actually grows. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Oh, guys, this is so good. Okay. How can uh, trust be built again even after mistakes? Mm. I think that's the big one. I think in yeah. very so many, uh, mm. yeah, so many areas of life. I know for Vicky and I in our relationship, uh, there was so much of, building trust again over different things. And yep. I think it's a big one that many people battle with. How do you build mm. trust again? What's the yep. advice? Obviously, I think the biggest thing is um, it comes back to, um, I owe it to myself to forgive. Yeah. Um, and I owe it to 
Ross to forgive, whatever that, obviously if there's been a breach of trust, there's been something that's taken place that has breached that trust. So I think it's little little steps mm. constantly and consistently yes. um, that help. Mm. Um, it's again, an honest conversation. Mm. Um, what can I do for you today mm. to build trust? Mm. What are some of the things I can do? Well, when I ring, can you pick up straight away? Yeah. Yes, I can mm. and yeah. I will. Yeah. And so that starts to Can build. Can you put a password yeah. on your phone? Yeah. Or if you have a password, tell me what it is. What it is. Yeah. You don't know how many yeah. marriages we Oof. know of yeah. where they don't know the partners. Wow. Yes. And a lot of it is the men not wanting the wife to see their phone. Wow. There's actually a lot that yeah. we know of. Yeah. Um, and it has. It's caused wow. caused issues because yeah. it's like, why? And they take their phone everywhere they go. Yeah. Um, mm. So things like that, it's yeah. just... It's openness and transparency, which is the hardest thing to do after you've been through something yeah. um, that has breached that trust. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, I, I, I come back to marriage is covenant relationship. Yeah. And I look at that and I'm thinking, okay, we're human. So yeah. trust will be broken. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. We've had breach of trust on both yeah. sides of mm -hmm. our marriage. Yeah. Um, and I, I see it. It's, it's kind of like marriage is like driving an excavator and you come up to a big tree. Yeah. And the excavator itself is an incredibly powerful machine. Yeah. But if I choose to go, oh, yeah, I just don't know about this mm -hmm. and take the excavator around the tree, the tree is going to stay there and the job will never get done. Mm -hmm. But when I know the power of what that excavator can do, I'll just go straight through, rip mm -hmm. that tree up and we can build a strong foundation. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's the power of a covenant relationship wow. in a marriage is we're in this, we're in this for life. Mm -hmm. So we have breached trust. We, we have hurt each other. There has been failings. There has been disappointments. Yeah, yeah. All of it. We've had it in the yeah, last 37 yeah. years. Yeah, um, yeah. However, you come back to that basic of I love you and you love me. On, it's hard so and it's good. difficult, but we've got an excavator on our side. Absolutely. And so we're not going to skip around this tree. We're going to go straight through it, tear the thing yeah. down, yeah. and move on in our destiny in Christ. Right. I don't know whether come that on. helps. I love wow. that. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything Kathy yeah. just said. Get counselling. Yeah. Like, like most of these issues probably just can't be resolved just a husband and wife together yeah. Yeah. when no. trust has been breached. Yeah. Um, Brene Brown says this is about vulnerability. When yeah. trust is broken, she said, vulnerability, vulnerability isn't about winning or losing. It's about having the courage to show up even when you can't control the outcome. And if you're not wow. willing to find that space of, yeah. mm. because vulnerability basically says, here's my weakness mm. and you can throw it back at me if, yeah. if you choose to. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so when, when two people that have lost trust yes. come with a vulnerability about yeah. them, then God can do anything. Yeah. But oftentimes you will need a third yeah. mediator, a person yeah. in there just to say, hey, let's, let's navigate yeah. this. Mm. But little practical things, as Kath said, if, you know, if you're going to be late home, Tell your spouse, yes. hey, so that, so it doesn't breed suspicion yes, in them. Great. Be open with your bank statements. Yeah. Don't hide mm -hmm. stuff with your phone or yeah. your computer. Don't slam it down when they yeah. don't have the door shut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, put a password if you're tempted in porn on yeah. on the, yeah. the, 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 the TV. Mm -hmm. Whatever it might be, do everything you can to yeah. protect your marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I, I love the... Um, yeah, whatever it takes, mm. we're getting through this. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever. And that is just absolutely. It doesn't matter with God. Yeah, we know all things are possible, and so yep. Yep. we're going to commit to that. Yep. that. Doing the hard yards, we're going to commit to the journey. Just um, you, you touched on porn, then, yep. uh, Ross. Um, we know porn is one of the oh, easiest things to yeah. slip into a marriage on both Especially sides. Yeah, these. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, we've spoken to you know, a lot of the church yeah. know about yeah. a journey of freedom in that. Yeah. Um, it, you know, I was so blessed with Vicky who journeyed with me yeah. in finding freedom in pornography and yeah. was so gracious. And that's where honesty out yeah, began. And mm -hmm. that's a, um, would you guys give any advice to a spouse or a partner who is freshly hearing this yeah. and, and trying to? get their head around so, how do I help my partner become free and how do I deal with the internal hurt, mm. the anger, the all of these things, all these emotions so that are coming out. Yeah. How it, it, it it's just for, for, for me I look at it and go, um, 
because there's two sides to the coin. There's the there's the shame of the person that's the offender, yeah. mm-hmm. and there's also the the body shame or personal shame of the the spouse who feels yeah. betrayed yeah. by this. Um, my my plea would be to the the the, the spouse who feels betrayed by this that that you've got to to the best of your ability keep a safe space for your partner to talk because the minute they feel if they bring something up that you're going to attack them yeah. and you're going to how dare you you're you know they're going to shut down yeah. and they're going to hide it in the dark and it's just going yeah. to grow and get worse yeah. so to the best of our ability keep a safe space so yeah. that you can talk yeah. and then for the person who has 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 been the offender in, in yeah. this place you've got to allow the restraints to be placed around us mm. so that we can build trust with our our partner yeah. And that is, you've got access to everything. Yeah. I'm not going to hide anything. Yeah. And that's where I find for, for some couples get really funny about that. Well, why yeah. do you need my phone? Yeah. We need your phone because we want to build trust. Yeah. And I think this is, we've had a lot of experiences, this, but even one recently um, with a couple, a third party is mm-hmm. so, um, so helpful mm-hmm. for a couple. Yeah. Um, that are struggling yeah. Um, yeah. and th- you know there was a prime example where I was that third party where the male or the female could call me at any time wow. and vent rather yeah. than vent to each other because it was so toxic yeah. for a season yeah. and both of them did yeah. and yeah. Um, did I offer advice did I say oh I can't believe you're saying that no it was just I just listened mm. but the power of having someone that was neutral yeah that they could go I can't believe she did this and now she's gone and blah blah yeah. blah and you're just yeah. like yep yep and then bringing that accountability in yeah um where you know the husband or the wife would say you know now I've, I've got to show him all my texts and it's invasion of my privacy and I'm like yeah but you can do this yeah you yeah. know and they're just yeah. like oh okay do you really think he's right in this and I'm yeah. like it's not about right or wrong it's just What's the wisdom in this yeah, situation? Yeah. So yeah, I think having a third party that's fighting for you both yeah, is such right. a liberating thing yeah, yeah. to help you get through it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And and often these couples, well, they've all survived. They've yeah. all, yeah. and now yeah. they look back, going, "Oh my gosh, there was like a blindfold yeah. over me. I couldn't." Yeah. It's beautiful.